Hi guys, in today's lesson we are going to learn what happens when a substance changes state. By the end of the lesson you will be able to explain the difference between chemical and physical changes. We'll be able to explain the processes of melting, boiling, evaporation, condensation and sublimation using the particle theory and be able to explain the law of conservation of mass during physical changes of a substance. We saw in the previous lesson that the three main states of matter are solids, liquids and gases. Um, the, solids the solids have particles with least energy and the gases uh, particles are most rich with energy. The state of the substance depends on the energy its particles have. Chemical changes mean bonds are broken and some new are formed. The changes are irreversible. We can look at two different examples here. The one is photosynthesis where carbon dioxide reacts with water uh, and inside the chlorophyll of the leaves with the light um, produces glucose and oxygen. This is a, in an irreversible reaction because the products cannot be reversed into carbon dioxide and water. The other example is combustion reaction. At the end of burning those logs, we're not going to have a reaction that we can just return it to having logs again. It is impossible to reverse the reaction and recover the original properties of the reactant. However, during physical changes, no chemical bonds are broken or formed. Only the intramolecular forces amongst the particles are either overcome or experienced as particles are moved further or closer together as a result of their kinetic energy. The changes are reversible. As you can see, we have solid, which is the ice. Then if we give it some heat, it will melt and we get liquid. And if we keep on heating the liquid, we will get gas. Altering the temperature of the substance by heating or cooling can bring about changes in state. This happens as the temperature affects the energy and therefore the speed and movement of the particles. Subsequently, it affects the intramolecular forces amongst the molecules. This is what happens to the particles in the diagram. You can see that if you heat or add energy, you will overcome the intramolecular forces. The particles will gain energy. They will start vibrating much faster and from solid they move into liquid and then gases. But if you start cooling them, then the intramolecular forces will increase and from gas we will get liquid and from the liquid we get solid. When solid is heated, energy is supplied to the particles making them vibrate or move faster. The speed will continue to increase as the temperature rises. If the heating continue long enough, the intramolecular forces will be overcome eventually and the particles will move about more freely. This is melting and the liquid is formed. As you can see, if you heat ice, by adding the energy, we get liquid. When a liquid is heated, energy is applied to the particles, making them move even faster. If the temperature is increased and the heating continues for a long enough, many of the particles will move so fast that the intramolecular forces will be overcome and the particles will escape from the liquid as a gas. This is how boiling occurs. As you can see on the diagram, if you heat water in the flask, the particles will gain so much energy that they will start moving even faster and eventually the energy will be 
high enough to overcome the intramolecular forces of the particles and they will escape in form of a gas. The particles of a liquid have different energies, so there are always some that move slowly and others that move very quickly. Even at fairly low temperatures, some of the particles at the surface of a liquid are moving fast enough to escape and form a gas. This explains how evaporation occurs. This is an example. If you have a puddle uh, of water somewhere, it will eventually disappear because evaporation occurs. When a gas is cooled, heat energy is removed from the particles, making them move more slowly. The speed of the movement continues to decrease as the temperature falls. If the cooling continues long enough, the particles will lose their freedom of movement. As the particles start to experience increased intramolecular forces, the gas changes into liquid. The condensation takes place. This is very common when we have a shower. It's very steamy in the room, but as the gas particles uh, reach the mirror, for example, or with time, we can see that some liquid or water drops are running down. That means that the particles have lost the energy and the intramolecular forces are much stronger and the gas changes into liquid. When a liquid is cooled, heat energy is removed from the particles, making them move more slowly. As the temperature falls, the movement of particles continue to decrease. If the cooling is long enough, the particles will eventually not be able to move about. They can only vibrate at place. This is called freezing and a solid is formed. Some substances like solid carbon dioxide, known as dry ice, do not melt when heated at ordinary atmospheric pressure, but change straight from a solid into a gas. This change is reversible, like melting and evaporation. These unusual changes of state, solid to gas and gas to solid without first melting, are both called sublimation. Sublimation is when it goes from solid to gas and this sublimation is gas to solid. The law of conser conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. In a physical change, a substance can change form, but the total mass remains the same. If we, if we look at this example in front of us, if we have 100 grams of ice cubes and we melt them, then physical change occurs, so we have um, solid turns into liquid, but the mass of the water in the liquid state is exactly 100 grams as well. So mass is conserved as the mass of the ice in the liquid in the glass is the same after melting.